You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on this very special Christmas episode. I'm going to keep it real short and sweet. I got Christmas stuff, you got Christmas stuff, but it is a tradition to do a Christmas episode and it's uh, it's always a pleasure to do it because really all it is is saying thank you. What I'm grateful for and thank you because obviously the biggest thing that I'm grateful for is the fact that, uh, what would it have been, three years ago? I can't keep track of time, man. I just am the worst at things. That's like one of my least favorite questions. Is when people ask me, like, oh, how many years ago did you start working? Or how many years ago did... It's like, dude, I don't... Somewhere between 5 and 18. I don't know. I have no... Please don't make me do math and try to think about, like, context. Like, well, my kid is 6, so... Within 5 years of that, I don't know, man. Hate it. I don't know. Roughly 3, maybe 4, possibly 2 years ago, when I decided to do the Packernet podcast... Sorry, Blaine, my ring touched my glass again. <laughs> Apparently, some people have real good speakers and headphones and they can hear all kinds of noises and it freaks them out. But um, I still remember, and, and part of the boost was that, you know, obviously I was thrown into the Packernet thing, so there were listeners right away. But I remember I had gotten, I think, like 100 downloads and I just lost it. Like 100 people listen to that? That's horrifying. <laughs> I mean, lost it in a good way, but I mean, that was a big deal. And that was like my first swing at it. I got 100 people to listen. And, you know, I had, I had done, like, a practice run, and you just throw a podcast out there, and I think, like, one person maybe listens. Like, man, this is going to be a rough battle. But everything I did was just, you know, we're going to stick our nose down and just work, and uh, if we get any result out of this cool, if not, then I guess that was a year wasted, and now we know. It didn't have to go anywhere. And I'm sitting here looking at it. Uh, this year, there were 928,603 downloads of the Packernet podcast. If I'd have known it would have been that close to a million, I would have not taken so many days off. But um, it's pretty wild. Obviously, as you know, it's a lot of work. I'm up every single day, seven days a week at 3 o'clock in the morning to to do it. But I do it because I love it, and I do it because I believe that it's going to go somewhere. Not Joe Rogany, because this will never get to that level. It's never going to get to super richy level, but could potentially get to a point where this is what I do. And this is all I do. And it definitely drives me, and the support that I get from you guys is pretty incredible, whether it's just downloading, um, interactions that I get, financial support that I get, just random encouragement. You know, hey, I've been listening for two years, just wanted to say thanks, and you're doing a great job. Like, that's, you know, it's weird because I, I interact with so many people, and I feel like I know my whole audience. You know, I talk to, like, 20, 30 people regularly, like, texting me constant, like, every day, and I, it's, it's great. I like having interaction with my audience, but it's a weird psychological thing where it's like, oh yeah, I know the people that listen to my show. They're in the the Facebook group and all that's That's a fraction. In a given month, there are probably 20,000 different people that have listened to the podcast. I don't know that many people, so uh, again, I don't I don't know what it is. Don't don't exactly know why everybody's here, but I do appreciate it. Um, I'm kind of a basket case, pulling you guys in a million different directions, but you, you know, you tolerate me, and I appreciate that. Whether next year we cross a million or cross two million or we stay at 928,603 downloads again, I just want you guys to know that I am grateful for whatever ends up happening with this. Um, It's already above and beyond probably what I deserve, (laughs) but I enjoy doing it. I'm happy to do it, and I hope you guys get at least a little something out of it. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about, but hopefully you have a good time hanging out with me sometimes. So I wanted to start with that, but I didn't want to end it there. Obviously, one of the greatest things I am grateful for is the team itself. I, you know, we're the luckiest sports fans on earth to be Green Bay Packers fans. And if you are 34 years old like I am, you've known nothing but great Packers memories. Just around that time when memories start to stick, the Packers had Brett Favre and they were winning football games. And it's not just the winning, it was the atmosphere. The the person that Brett Favre is and was the kind of of characters that we've had, guys like Reggie White, the fact that it's a small town team and and just looking at the the stadium and the city and the snow and, you know, there's houses, you know, when you get a a blimp's eye view of the stadium in the 50s, you know, it's just this tiny little rinky-dink thing and houses all around it. You'd think it's a high school stadium. Grateful for Ron Wolf and Brett Favre and 
Leroy Butler and, you know, Charles Woodson, just all the guys that made this such a fun experience. I especially want to thank Aaron Rodgers, Matt LaFleur, and Brian Gutekunst because it was really, really, really starting to look like this podcast started the day the Packers declined. Like it was going to start at the beginning of a 30-year horrible stretch, Um, but they were able to pull this thing back up. Oh, of course, Mark Murphy, who started this whole thing, who decided to take more control of the team, who realized this thing was getting wildly out of control. He was going to take it by the reins and make all the decisions. He let some guys go. He decided to hire Gutekunst, which is a great decision. Some people have been vehemently disagreeing with that. I don't care. I'm not interested in that discussion today. You're wrong, and I don't talk to wrong people on Christmas. It's just a policy that I have. (laughs) Only correct people. I know I talk a lot of trash, but I mean, even the guys that I talk trash about, I know we're never going to be friends. If any Packer fan ever listened to this podcast, they, they got me blacklisted. For sure. But um, we would not have a successful team if it wasn't for guys like Billy Turner, if it wasn't for guys like Kevin King, if it wasn't for guys like Lucas Patrick, Montrevious Adams, Christian Kirksey, Robert Tunyon especially, Kenny Clark, in, in a very big way, has given us a lot to be grateful for. You know, at the end of the day, it's a game, and their job is to play football as well as they possibly can, make a ton of money, and then never look back. My job is to talk Packers and to talk about the good and the bad. That gives us completely different paths, but I'm completely fine with that. Because at the end of the day, as much as they annoy me sometimes, and as much as the fans annoy them sometimes, when you really get down to it, we need to be grateful for them just as much as they should be grateful for us. And I think deep down that is the case grateful for a team that is seemingly just starting and I know we're concerned about Aaron Rodgers and all that but but it really is a resurgence and who's to say that this isn't year two of a, of a two-year three-year five-year stretch and that's only assuming that Jordan Love is not a good quarterback which we have not established that because he had one bad throw in practice <laughs> or because he's not starting over an MVP quarterback I mean we I would say we don't have quite enough information yet but even so Grateful to be where we are, the number one team in the NFC right now. I'm grateful that regardless of what happened, whether we're one and done in the playoffs or Super Bowl champions in a matter of weeks, that we've been able to enjoy this season together. I mentioned a long time ago the importance of football for this country, and I believe that. Everything that we've been going through, it was important that they forge ahead and play football. We needed something else to fight about, and I was correct about that. It has been the right decision. And I'm very grateful for it. We've had, again, some fantastic, amazing moments that have led to some incredible wins. Additional highlights that, you know, as much as we don't appreciate it at the time, we're going to be watching in two, three, four, five years going, oh man, that was a heck of a season. And we get to live it today, now. And we get another opportunity on Sunday, God willing, that we're still here for it. But today is an opportunity for us to be thankful for our families, for our friends. For some of us, we don't have very many friends, but... (laughs) But we got family. For some of you, you don't have family, but you got friends. And if you got neither, you could always hit me up. I'm just sitting around watching my kids open an obscene amount of presents. Sucking down coffee, trying not to pass back out. Because we got home at 10.30 last night. And I had to get up at 4. You know, because, I mean, not only do you got to do this podcast, but you got to set them. Christmas is a big deal for me, man. It was magical for me as a kid, and I want it to be that way for my kids. So it's got to get the the classical Christmas music going. It's got to be going. Got the candles lit, the Christmas candles. We got a fake tree, so I got the pine candle going, because I like that smell. You got to lay out all the presents, and it's got to be, not not before everybody goes to bed, because you want the kids to wake up and be like, whoa, you know what I mean? And the only other tradition is, uh, for some reason, I bake cookies in the morning. I just want there to be, like, treats and stuff when people get up. So anyways, I was up early, I'm very tired, assuming I'm still awake. Again, you hit me up anytime. I'm getting less responsive because there's so many people that message me, but I'll make it a special point today. If you just want to drop in and say hi, more than happy to uh, wish you a Merry Christmas in person. I know this is a tough time for a lot of people, especially this year. It's been a lot of loss, a lot of hardship, marriage strife, family strife. It's tough, man, but we're all suffering through it together. You'll be all right. Anyways, I don't have much else for you, man. Just be grateful. The majority of my audience is listening from the United States of America. It's the greatest, strongest, freest nation in the world. No offense to everybody else, but just be grateful for it. And by the way, if you're living in Ireland or, you know, a lot of other places, you're also doing quite well. Be grateful for that as well. Dara, complaining about Ireland. You're fine.
or just come here. There's a lot of open space around here, man. They talk about overpopulation, but have you ever been on an airplane? There's nobody anywhere in this country. Like 5% is like cities, the rest is just open fields. Just come buy a field and uh, put a brick house on. I don't know. I don't know how it works. I'm just saying. We got some space. But finally, being that it is Christmas, I also want to mention that I am very thankful to God for giving me this life, for giving me my family, for being so gracious and good to me, despite <laughs> any merit on my end. So, God bless you. God bless your family. I hope you have the best Christmas of your life. Enjoy it, because it's going to be a rough game on Sunday. <laughs> Take care, have a Merry Christmas, and I will talk to you tomorrow.